In this video, we are going to look at adding state symbols to uh, chemical equations. Uh, there are four state symbols you need to be aware of. Um, if your chemical is in this solid state, you are going to put a lowercase s after the chemical. If your chemical is in a liquid state, you will put a lowercase l. If it's a gas, you'll put a lowercase g. And if it's in solution or aqueous, that means if you've got something dissolved in water, then you're going to put a lowercase aq. Now, how will you know what state your chemicals are in? Typically, you'll be told in the question, but there are some that you are expected to know. Okay, so if your chemical equation contains any metal, you are expected to know that metals are solid at room temperature and therefore you're going to be putting an S. Ionic compounds, so a compound between a metal and a non-metal, unless you're told that it's been dissolved in water, you can also assume that they are solid at room temperature. Water is the common one here for L, for liquid or molten. Molten just means you've had a solid and you've melted it, therefore it is a liquid. Often students confuse this one. They write AQ because they associate AQ with water. But if it's just water and nothing is dissolved in it, then your state symbol will be L. Common gases, carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, you are expected to know they are gases, therefore we'll have the state symbol G. You've also got methane gas and ammonia gas, which you do um, meet uh, in specific chapters in the course, so even if you're not familiar with them now, you will become more familiar with them. They are also gases and will be G. Typically, when something's dissolved in water, you are told but all acids are always, always aqueous. Acids are always dissolved in water and the same with alkalis. And again, if they mention in the question that something's an acid, you're expected to know it's AQ or similarly in alkali, you're expected to know it's AQ. So if we come down here, we can look at an example. So this is what you'll get in your exam. It will give you uh, a sentence describing a reaction. It will ask you to fill in the state symbols. And you can see here, you've got the underscore coming after the chemical. When we looked at balancing equations, we were putting a big number in front of the chemical formula. Now we are putting our state symbols after the chemical formula, which is why these dashes exist. So it says here, the solid calcium carbonate. So what you need to do is you need to look at your chemical equation and find which one is calcium carbonate. So calcium is Ca, so I've got a Ca here, then carbon 8, carbon is C, and if you end in 8, it tells you oxygen is present. So calcium carbonate would be the first one here. They're telling you that it's a solid, so I just need to fill in an S was added to hydrochloric acid. Now you do need to know the formula of hydrochloric acid. You encounter it in the acids topic quite a lot. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. And because they're telling you that it's an acid, again, you're expected to know that acids are AQ. Acids are always dissolved in water. So I'm gonna fill in an AQ. To make the solution calcium chloride. Now calcium chloride, Calcium Ca, chlorine Cl, there's the formula for calcium chloride to make the solution. They're telling you it's a solution. If it's a solution, it's dissolved in water and it's going to be Aq. You're making water, but they fill that in for you. Water is a liquid and carbon dioxide, which is a gas. If we look at the next one, you're told a solution of chlorine. So chlorine by itself is, is Cl2. It's diatomic, so it's always Cl2. Um, and because it's a solution, again, they're telling you there that the state symbol is going to be Aq. Was added to aqueous sodium iodide. So sodium iodide is going to be Na for sodium, I for iodine, so this one here. And they're telling you it's aqueous sodium iodide. Again, it's aqueous, so it's going to be Aq. To form sodium chloride, they haven't asked for the state symbol, but it is Aq and iodine, and again, they filled in that state symbol for you already. I'll just do one more with you. Hydrochloric acid is reacted with the alkali sodium hydroxide. Again, you expect to recognize a hydrochloric acid is HCl. Because it's an acid, it's going to be AQ. Is reacted with the alkali sodium hydroxide, so sodium hydroxide, sodium is Na, hydroxide is OH. So this is the formula for a sodium hydroxide. It's an alkali, and again, if we see from our table, Alkalis, just like acids, are always AQ. 
to make sodium chloride solution, okay, if it's a solution, it's also going to be AQ and water. And again, water, common misconception, it's not AQ, nothing is dissolved in it if it's pure and therefore it's just liquid, it's going to be L. I want you to pause and I want you to have a go at the next one. Okay, so I filled in the answers there. Magnesium is a metal, therefore it is solid. Hydrochloric acid, we've seen already. Magnesium chloride solution, that makes it AQ. Hydrogen, you are expected to know that hydrogen is a gas. The next question here, I've asked you to balance and add to the missing state symbols. So when we're balancing, we're using big numbers and we're putting them at the front. That's why I've got this underscore here at the front of HCl for the balancing number. The missing state symbols, they're all going to go after the chemical formula. So you can see I've already filled it in for CuCl2, but I want you to do it for copper, hydrochloric acid and H2. I haven't given you any information in the question, but copper is a metal, Hydrochloric acid is an acid, and hydrogen you are expected to know. So press pause, have a go at balancing, and add in the missing state symbols. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Uh, only one underscore, so I only need one balancing number. A big two in front of HCl means I now have two hydrogens on each side. I've got two chlorines on each side, and I've still only got one copper. Copper is a metal, therefore it's solid at room temperature. Acids are always AQ, and hydrogen, again, you're expected to know it's a gas. I want you to do the same thing here. I want you to balance and I want you to add your missing state symbols. Uh, H2SO4 is sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide, we saw it in the previous example, is an alkali. Uh, and then you've got water at the end. So balance and add state symbols. All right, so look at state symbols first. Because it's an acid, it's going to be AQ. Because it's an alkali, it's going to be AQ. This one's already given to you. And water, again, there's nothing dissolved in it. It's going to be liquid. It's not going to be AQ. To balance, I've left an underscore in front of sodium hydroxide and H2O. So that's where the numbers need to go. This is easier to balance. I've got two sodiums on the right-hand side. I need two sodiums on the left. So I put a two in front of NaOH. Slightly harder to balance water. Um, if we look at hydrogen, I've got two hydrogens from H2SO4, and I've got two times one, two hydrogens from NaOH. So in total, I've got four hydrogens on the left-hand side. To give me four hydrogens on the right, I need a big two in front of H2O. Then I've got two times two is four. Double check with the oxygens. I've got four oxygens here from H2SO4, and I've got two here from NaOH. That gives me six oxygens on the left. Over here, I've got four. And then here I've got two times one is two. So I've got six oxygens on each side. Again, it is balanced. Um, for your state symbols, you typically get one mark for adding the state symbols and then you'll get another mark for completing the balancing, but they're really, really easy marks. Often they do tell you in the question um, what the state symbol should be. It's just a matter of putting in the letters.